quick video regarding pressing mechanics and the differences that exist if we're using like free weights, like barbells or dumbbells, or using our body weight uh, in terms of like push-ups um, or handstand push-ups and things of that nature. And we'll talk about uh, some of the mobility um, green lights we want to see if someone's going to do certain exercises as well too. So when I'm doing a push-up or a handstand or handstand push-up, it's considered a closed chain exercise. So that means that my hands are anchored on something and my body is moving around where my hands are positioned. And there's some differences that we would want to see someone do a push-up versus how they would do a bench press. When we do a push-up, we want to see the shoulders move freely. Okay, we've got a muscle here that's in our armpit area called the serratus that allows us to push the shoulder blades forward. And if we never get out of just doing bench press, we're never gonna have that strength of actually using that muscle that's gonna help for to have a more stable shoulder. So we're looking for protraction. So the protraction is the, is the ability to push forward. So that's what we're looking for. So when I do a push up, I want to see the neck long and neutral. I want to see active hands so my fingers are wide and I'm gripping the floor, which we'll talk about later. And I'll be in a good position where the glutes are squeezed and the abs are tight. And basically, as you see here, already in the, in the, tar in the start, I'm pushing my shoulders apart and my armpits into the ground. We don't want to see this as a starting position for the push-up. So when I get into my push-up, I'm going to lower myself down to wherever I can control and press back up into that same position. So what we don't want to see from the back are the shoulder blades pinched together and not moving, okay? So when I lower myself down, yes, the shoulder blades will come together, but on the way up, we want to push them apart to get that activation um, in that serratus muscle to work on that protraction, which is very important. If I'm doing a bench press or a dumbbell bench press or a shoulder press with weight, the rules are changed. So in that case, when I get myself set, I want to have my shoulders pinched together and stay pinched for the whole set. So if this, if this is my bench press, I'm going to roll back. I'm going to set my shoulder blades first and keep those shoulder blades pinched together with the chest up. And as I press, those shoulder, shoulder blades stay tight. What we don't want to see are our loose shoulder blades where things are getting uh, unstable as we press. So we want to think, stay tight and press up. In a, both a push-up and a bench, however, a good test for yourself is to see the shoulder extension you have. So shoulder extension is your ability to bring your arms behind your back. So we want to see good extension of the shoulder. What we don't want to see is if someone gets, they're bringing their arms behind their back and they get stuck here. Well, we probably don't want to have that person go into a full range push-up or take a barbell or dumbbells all the way down if they don't have that control of that area. So in that case, you're going to probably want to use um, the range you have or shorten the range so that way you're working with it within uh, the range of motion that you can control that you own Another thing you'll see with a shoulder extension would be if someone cheats it and they keep bringing their arm back You're gonna see the shoulder dump forward. So if I'm doing a push-up I don't want to do a push-up and have my shoulder dump forward because it's gonna put more stress on that interior portion of the shoulder and aggravate so again, we want to think use the shoulder extension that we can control. If I'm pressing overhead, a test we want to see is if I can bring my arm and line it up with my ear, okay? So it's very important. If I don't have that range, I probably don't want to add load to a range I, I, don't, uh, I don't own. Along with that, if I, again, if I cheat like a shoulder extension, if I bring my arm up, up, I'm up, and it's like, well, I can get there and start arching back, well, then we're gonna put stress on our low back to uh, compensate for the, uh, the range we don't have, okay? So a great way to uh, avoid cheating 
would be to press from a half viewing position because it makes us it makes it a little more challenging to compensate by leaning back and overarching. So if I'm doing a press with a dumbbell or a kettlebell, I'm in a good half viewing position. Abs are tight, my glutes are squeezed, and when I press up, it's much harder to lean back and compensate with that rate, with that the overarching the low back, where I can kind of put a bit of stress on there and not get the, uh, the gains from this exercise that I would otherwise uh, want to get. So again, that's a good good kind of test for yourself. Hey, can I get my arm up here, line up my ear? If you don't, maybe you want to be using an incline press or a landmine press or a low incline press. Um, so that way it's probably gonna be a little more comfortable for yourself and give you some more long-term progress. The other thing with pressing, that are, there's two um, that work for both barbell or dumbbell and body weight uh, pressing is our elbow position. So what we don't wanna see are the elbows flared super wide. Often people have the tendency of benching with the elbows wide or a wider grip and same thing with push-ups. And what this does, again, it can kind of aggravate the front area of the shoulder. You might feel initially that this is a strong position, but over time, it can start to irritate and not to feel great. So also, we don't want to see the elbows glued to the ribs either. So the happy medium is going to be somewhere in the middle where, I like to say, pretend you've got uh, a softball in between your, your tricep and your, and, your, uh, and your ribs, and you want to kind of keep that softball there. So whether I'm doing uh, a push-up, or I'm doing a press, um, it's gonna be a little more shoulder friendly to be somewhere in the middle. Last thing with pressing, often people forget about the grip. So like I said, with the push-ups, we want to give like an active hand, gripping into the floor. Your grip is tied to your rotator cuff. So if I have a loose grip or a weak grip, my rotator cuff is not firing to its full potential. So when we say, if you're using a barbell, if you're, if you're using dumbbells, if you're using a kettlebell, we want to say white knuckles. So think of really gripping into that implement. By gripping, you're getting that rotator cuff to fire, and you're going to feel a lot stronger. So don't be one of those people that has dumbbells and you see the hands open and you're pressing. We've all done it. So just get in the habit of squeezing, squeezing hard. If you're doing a, uh, a body weight press or a handstand, you want to think your fingers are wide and you're actually gripping into the floor to really get the shoulder nice and stable. So again, a few tips there for yourself, uh, regardless of the presses you're using, whether it be body weight, a lot of people are doing push-ups right now, and that's fine. Or if you have set up to do some free weight stuff, make sure we want active grip, uh, favor a neutral grip or an elbow that's somewhere in the middle between high and low, and make sure you're picking exercises um, that are in ranges of motion uh, that work best for yourself. So hope that helped you out. If you have any questions, let us know.